About 15 years ago, while playing golf, I caused a strain to my lower back. And a good friend of uh, mine recommended that I keep, come and see Jerry at the Health Equation. Now, Jerry deals in, in back pains, amongst other things. And over the next uh, few weeks, he managed to uh, cure that pain and uh, put my back straight. So whilst lying on my, uh, on my stomach, Jerry and I talked about a, about a more balanced lifestyle and how treating my body and the way I live more holistically. Now, it is amazing, having read more about it and discussed it more with Jerry, that the health equation is able to advise you on the cause and effect of doing certain things, whether it's to do with eating, whether it's to taking a across-the-counter prescription. But what the things that natural, sorry, that uh, conventional medicine uh, gives you is more about treating symptoms rather than looking at the root cause. And I suppose that uh, I did come to Jerry fairly skeptically regarding a uh, holistic approach, but it is amazing the number of things that uh, happen in your body and you wonder why it's happening and then you can actually track it back to something you could be taking even if it's just an anti-acid uh, uh, tablet for, for heartburn. So in my time and my discussions with Jerry over the years, we've always tried to, to focus not on symptoms and alleviation of symptoms, but actually more on the root cause, why illnesses or anything can actually happen to you. And I have been skeptical and Jerry's made suggestions to me. And whilst I've gone away and thought about it and then actually tried it out, it's amazing the, the number of times that Jerry has actually been right. And by doing what he has told me to do or suggested that I do, it actually worked. And I suppose that confidence does build up over 15 years and hence I'm sitting here in front of the, uh, the camera now because I think it is important for people to actually think and truly about the holistic approach to their life and not to necessarily or automatically put in an over the prescription tablet in your mouth without actually wondering why is this happening to me and hence I've become a little bit of an, uh, an apostle for the health equation as it is so important that people can manage their lives and be keep in much better health if they actually think along these lines. Take diet, for example. I suppose in a busy lifestyle, one tends not to eat uh, regularly and one tends to, to snack a bit too much. Now, over the years, I've uh, suffered from heartburn and although I have really tried to eat uh, normally, and more regularly. I suppose I had been taking in too much wheat. And it was interesting that uh, Jerry mentioned that if I wanted to cut down uh, some of the acid in my stomach, if I cut down the, uh, my wheat in, intake, uh, that might have the desired effect. Now I was somewhat skeptical about this, but I must say that over the, uh, well, just a few days afterwards, uh, our discussion, I cut out uh, or cut myself down to about one slice of bread a day and cut out some of the other carbohydrates and it did make a dramatic difference which then enabled me to actually stop taking my anti-acid tablets. As an osteopath I did my nutritional education at undergraduate level but I also did a significant amount of CPD in 2001 and over the past couple of years I've engaged in a very innovative nutritional program called Metabolic Balance. What's interesting is when I talk to most of my patients, about 80% of them will say, hmm, I think I've got a good diet. And then you actually ask them to do a diet diary and they write down what they eat and drink over a, a two or three day period. And you begin to realize what they think is a good diet may not be such a good diet, particularly for their particular problems. And then you get into some testing, maybe some nutritional testing, some blood testing, and you realize actually this patient does need some help. I think what's interesting looking at and using metabolic balance 
is there are very interesting nutritional concepts which I think are valuable to everybody. So for example, we're aware that there are three major food groups, proteins, carbohydrates and fats. A lot of Westerners have a very high carbohydrate diet, essentially a starch diet. And all carbohydrates, when they're broken down, release sugar. And sugar, unfortunately, is highly destructive to the body. Although we need sugar in the form of glucose for cells to run properly, too much sugar causes problems. So we tend to say to patients these days, I really need you to choose what we call low glycemic load carbohydrates. That means sugar uh, or carbohydrates which release sugar in a very slow way. Now, most fruits and vegetables are probably okay. However, surprisingly, things like bananas and dried fruits are very high in sugar. So we tend to not recommend those, recommend those for patients on a, a daily basis. A lot of patients don't have enough protein in their diet. So we tend to encourage patients to choose proteins for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it's important to choose good quality proteins and to not to have the same protein more than once a day. So for example, a, a patient might say to me, Jerry, I've got a fantastic diet. I eat muesli every day with chopped bananas, then I have chicken and pasta for lunch, and then I have fish and pasta for dinner. Now, I know that's not eating McDonald's three times a day, but the point is that actually cereals in particular push up your glycemic load and things like pasta also pushes up your glycemic load. So a good example for breakfast for some people might be, for example, fruit and yogurt. Another example might be scrambled egg on rye toast. Another example might be sardines on rye toast. Lunch, a very good example might be having a fillet steak with vegetables or having chicken with vegetables. Dinner, you might have, for example, fish and vegetables. We tend to try to encourage patients to not overconsume an alcohol. Whilst alcohol has its own particular problems, overloading the liver and pancreas, it's actually the sugar contained in alcohol that causes particular problems. So these days, the government guidelines for alcohol consumption tends to be 14 units a week for a woman and up to 21 units a week for a man. We would tend to say it's probably more useful to have a day of drinking if you want to, followed by a day of not drinking. So perhaps three to four days a week you're not drinking at all, and the other three to four days you're perhaps only consuming two to three units a day as a maximum. A lot of patients can't imagine this would be possible, but actually over a period of time it is. Another common problem that a lot of people have is they like to snack, particularly if they're engaged in lots of exercise. Many of my patients will be having breakfast, followed by a so-called healthy snack in the middle of the morning, followed by lunch and yet another healthy snack mid-afternoon, followed by dinner. So in fact, they're consuming food up to five, six times a day. Now what a lot of people don't know is when you eat a carbohydrate, it takes about five hours for your insulin and glucose to get back down to normal again. So if you're eating every two to three hours, insulin, which is a very important hormone, and it's the hormone that controls glucose regulation, unfortunately won't get back down to normal. So under the principles of metabolic balance, we encourage people to eat a healthy breakfast, a healthy lunch, a healthy dinner, and to do their best to avoid snacking and therefore lessen the glycemic load on the body. The scientific recommendations are about 35 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. Now that sounds complicated, but for most people that would probably be between 2.5 to 3 liters of water a day. You've got to remember that if you drink things like tea or coffee, although that's fluid, there is a diuretic effect of tea and coffee. So that essentially means for every cup of tea or coffee you're drinking in, you're probably peeing out more than you actually take in. So it's very important that actually when we say to somebody, drink two and a half to three liters of water a day, we really mean two and a half to three liters of water a day. The other strange thing is that although a lot of people are into fruit juices and smoothies, 
fruit juices and smoothies, although it's fruits, as soon as you break down the fruit, again, it massively increases the glycemic load. So essentially, drinking fresh fruit for breakfast in the morning is like having a massive sugar shot straight into your blood system. So there's another important thing about proteins. Each protein contains a number of what we call essential amino acids. Essential actually means the body can't produce them and therefore we need them from dietary sources. What's important is each protein doesn't have the same amount of essential amino acids, which is why in metabolic balance we tend to recommend a different protein for breakfast, a different protein for lunch, and a different protein for dinner. That way, it's more likely you'll get your combination of essential amino acids throughout the day. Amino acids are really important because they provide the chemical substrates for, for example, certain hormone productions like thyroxine, which is your thyroid hormone, certain neurotransmitters in your brain like serotonin, which is your happy hormone, which in depressed people, which is why your GP might recommend Prozac if you are slightly depressed. Proteins also manufacture a number of chemicals and enzymes which simply make your body work properly. Therefore, one of the key things about metabolic balance is really varying your proteins and making sure you get adequate protein intake throughout the day. I was absolutely amazed to hear it was, must have been over a year, 18 months ago. NICE, which is the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, they are the body that approves treatments for the NHS. And what I read was they had found a revolutionary new way of treating anxiety and depression. As I got further into the research document, it basically came down to breathing and meditation. What was fascinating, of course, is breathing and meditation has been around for a few thousand years. Many systems of medicine, such as Ayurvedic medicine in India, have practiced breathing and meditation for many, many years. However, as NICE have now approved this, this has been more widely used within the NHS. If patients ask me, two of the most important things about trying to improve their health, I would honestly say, breathe, meditate, give time and space in your life for your mind and body to relax. This, of course, needs to be coupled with good nutrition. If you can do these two things and follow it with a balance of exercise, which is good for your body, good cardiovascular exercise, good stretching exercise, and good strength exercise, my guess is this will lead to good optimal health.